Welcome back. Warmer weather is also back and that means the bugs are coming out of winter hiding and one of those that we have to talk about are ticks. They can be a concern for both animals and kids, even adults. Joining me now from UT Medical Center is Dr. Mark Rasnicki. Thank you so much for coming on today. It's my pleasure. First and foremost, what to do if your child sees a tick on them, maybe even on your animal, because there's different precautions to take versus human versus animal, what to do, where to go? Sure, so the first thing is if you see a tick on a child and it hasn't been attached yet, just grab a tissue or something and remove the tick. And those are the easiest ones. And if you do routine checks for ticks after mm -hmm. a kid has been out playing in the woods, yeah. you can usually find those things before they get embedded and they're very easy to remove. Now what if they are embedded and you have to pull it off of a child? So what you wanna do is do that very carefully so that you don't break the tick. Sometimes if you leave part of the tick attached, it can still lead to um, transmission of infection. And so the best thing to do is go to the CDC website okay. and look for ticks on the search and they have a beautiful page that shows you how to remove ticks safely if okay. it's attached to you. And do you do the same process for animals? I know I just adopted a dog and sure enough, two months later, I found a cluster after going for a walk in yeah. the park. And ideally remove those as soon as possible. Okay. And usually some tweezers are the best way to do that. And try to avoid touching the tick with your bare hands if possible. Uh, okay. The ticks can still sometimes spread infection infection. Uh, I've had people get sick from just crushing a tick between really? their fingers after removing it from an animal. And how do you dispose of a tick properly? And just throw it away. Throw it away? Okay. And then what do you do to make sure that you are not infected with anything? How dangerous can tick bites be? So Especially if they're embedded. Sure. So most ticks aren't infected with pathogens that can make you ill with an infection. So okay. most ticks aren't going to get you sick. So if you do get a tick bite, you don't need to take antibiotics. You don't need to see a doctor. Uh, just remove the tick. But if you do start to get a fever, chills, sweats, or a rash within a week or so of that tick, you do need to see a physician because some of these infections can be pretty dangerous. Some of them carry diseases. What yes. are some of those diseases? So the most dangerous one we see in East Tennessee is Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. Okay. And uh, that one can be a lethal infection in some people. And I have had, I've seen people that have died from Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever before. Uh, but if treated early, it is an extremely easy infection to treat. Uh, some pills for about 10 to 14 days. So it can, can be cure. cured. Yeah, absolutely. You just have to stay on top of the Yes. Checks. When should you take someone to the hospital if you are starting to know those symptoms? Yeah, so fevers, chills, body aches uh, immediately go in because Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever is something that can go from no symptoms to a life-threatening ICU level Really? illness in about 24 hours if untreated. It can move really fast. So overnight, if overnight, you're thinking, oh, this right. is just my allergies, maybe I'm getting a cold, and then you wake up feeling like death. Right, right. Just and get so in there ASAP? Absolutely. Okay. Is there any preventative measures? I mean, does any type of bug spray work for this kind of thing? That is a great question because a lot of bug sprays that you buy from mosquito repellent yeah. may not repel ticks. They either have the wrong product or they have the a lower concentration that might not work for ticks. And the EPA, if you go to epa.gov mm -hmm. and look for insect repellents, they actually list a bunch of different products and tell you which ones can repel both ticks and mosquitoes. Oh, and so, so you don't have to double up. You don't, you don't. And there's a lot. Most I don't of do them, bugs. I would double no, up. <laughs> most of them will repel both. And so okay, you're, you're fortunate if you just grab a random product off the shelf like DEET. <laughs> <laughs> it will repel both ticks and mosquitoes. But there are some people that have sensitivity to deep yes. and they don't like that chemical or they don't I'm like the smell. I'm also in that category, yeah, doctor. And, and there's a lot of alternate products that are available these Fabulous. days that work well for both ticks and mosquitoes. Okay. But you, you kind of have to know which was which. Always do your research. Absolutely. Thank you so much, doctor. This welcome. is such useful information. If you want